All right. Here we go. All right, guys. This is going to be Relentless Livestream, uh, book five of The Lost Fleet. We've been working on this for a while. And really, really excited to share this with you guys. Um, we will introduce ourselves and then do a quick summary. And then as soon as that summary is done, we will uh, go into thoughts on the... Um, sorry, I'm trying to get the kids outside. Um, we'll uh, okay. go into uh, what we're doing. So why don't you guys uh, introduce yourselves and uh, we will hop into the summary. Oh, I knew you can do that. All right, I'm Joe from Unity 151. Um, I talk about sci-fi books. I kind of like, I review them sometimes. I um, have do like a weekly writing one, which I would be doing it now, but I'm doing this, where I talk about, st oh crap, sorry. Um, writing, up, uh, talk about my writing, other writing. I get authors, they come on and they talk about writing to help and stuff because I'm learning. Um, sometimes these guys join me, sometimes not. Cole, he just disappeared off the face of the earth, doesn't turn up no more. Um, uh, I do a new thing, which is tied into my universe. I am uploading it every Monday, so it will be Monday tomorrow. It's like a short law video. Five minutes, give or take. This one might be longer now, but it's just talking about a conflict that happened that ties into my book timeline-wise, but it's not a direct influence of the book when it comes out. So that's something that comes out. So if you like law videos with pretty art and apparently a good voice in, do it. It's not my voice, don't worry. My voice is terrible. Um, that's it. I'm Joe. There we go. There we go. Let's meet yeah, the, video, the videos are voiced very well. Um, your uh, significant pop. other is uh, good at the voiceover. She did. She, she is very good, actually. Like, I, I was telling my friends about it. I sort of understand it a bit. I don't like be like, yes, it'll be amazing, amazing, it'll be crap. I was like, it's going to be all right. You know, like she's voiced it, got a few art pictures and stuff going on. And then like, you and a few other people, my friends, when they first saw it straight away, they're like, it's really good, Joe. Like, the voice is so good. Who done it? And all like, stuff. I was like, oh, it's my partner. It's like, that's really good. Like, you undersold like how good it was going to be. I was like, oh, really? Like, <laughs> I was a bit nervous at first. But yeah, that's, that's it. Go watch it. It's on my channel. One of the first ones. Yertle versus Unity Law video something. I'll try that. to. I'll try to link it in the. Um, yeah, below. if you can do that. Thank you. Oh, yeah, you're the man. Carl with Geek on My Sleeve. Joe, I will be getting back in on the writing streams. Pete and I have been getting back into it on our writing bit. Um. On our Geek On My Sleeve channel, we typically hang out in the fantasy sci-fi realm, though we've been having a lot of fun in the lit RPG genre. Uh, for those that don't know, it's pretty much, think, um, trapped in a video game, uh, video game mechanics, all that good stuff. So for those of us who are avid gamers yet don't have time to play much anymore, it's... Uh, kind of scratches that itch for us. Um, but yeah, huge fan of the Lost Fleet series. Read it ages ago. Really excited to hang out with Joe and Ramsey and talk about it. Um, one of the big things we do on our channel is every week we pretty much do just this, where uh, we pick a book, we talk about it, and have a lot of fun. So this weekend, I'm getting a two for one, and I'm looking forward to talk about Relentless. So, yeah. Salute. Ramsey, are you on the um, the summary? Yes, I, I'm linking uh, Joe's video real quick. Mm. Um, oh, so, let me uh, paste. All right, it is, it is in there. All right, so let's go to the summary. Uh, so the pro plot of Relentless picks up in Dalawa. I guess I can put my face up at the front there. Um, plot of Relentless picks up in Dalawa. John Blackjack Geary, commander of the fleet, after much deliberation, mostly due to struggling with potential losses regarding of his decision, sets the fleet on a course to Harado, uh, a system that is holding many Alliance POWs. After a fleet engagement and lengthy land battle, during which the syndicate system planets all rebel and plunge into a civil war, Geary may manages to free many of the prisoners despite suicidal attack attempts, including nuclear strikes against the camp. After recovering the prisoners and available supplies, Geary sets course for Padronus. After only learning of a massive reserve flotilla fleet that the Syndic ships have uh, held in reserve to fight off a unseen alien race. 
Shortly after arriving at Padronis, another sabotage another sabotage attempt is made in the time this time claiming heavy cruiser Lorica and nearly battle cruiser Dauntless herself. After receiving vital information from Commander Gaze, Geary unmasked the traitor during a fleet conference as as well as the identity of a second participant, and despite attempts by Captain Killa to silence her collaborators, Geary manages to capture capture several of the main saboteurs. Though the leading dissenter, Captain Killa, Killa herself manages to commit suicide rather than face trial of her peers. Arriving at the Alatar Atilia system, Geary comes across the aftermath of fleet action between the reserve flotilla and the fleet of the Alliance warships. Continuing to be true to his word, Geary accepts the pseudo def defection of a syndicate commander who informs him that the hypernet gate at Caxilla, sorry, um, had her, where her ship was initially been stationed, spontane spontaneously exploded, utterly destroying all human life in the system. Though the syndicate officer believes the alliance to be responsible for purposefully using the gate as a weapon of mass destruction. Finally, jumping to Verendal, Gary leads a successful attack against the Cynic fleet, managing to prevent them from making a retaliatory strike using the Alliance Hypernet Gate. This is the moment he unites with the, his grandniece, Jane Geary, captain of the Dreadnought. Dreadnought plays an important part in holding off the Cynic attack on the Hypernet Gate. After the Cynic fleet flees, Geary puts his fleet at this point nearly completely out of munitions and fuel. Um, and overloaded with rescue pris rescued prisoners of war in for refitting and repair. Um, so big moments that I'd love to talk about is the um, land battle for the POWs in um, Harado, and then um, the sabotage attempt, um, the battle, uh, the first battle where they fight, uh, right before they go back into Alliance system, and then the last battle where they go uh, through the Alliance system. So, who wants to take over for the um, initial land battle uh, at the Prisoner of War camp? You got to jog my memory. You got to keep going. Uh, you, you, you lead. You lead. Keep leading. Okay. I. Oh, go, Carl, go on. Oh, I was just going to say. Um, I think we've talked about it before on previous streams where um, we wish there was more combat there. And um, I know for myself, I wish that we got to see more of the Marines and this book was it, right? Like we finally got some of that good old action because um, in a lot of ways, I felt like early on in the series, the Marines were like one of his first backers, right? Like his mm -hmm. real, um, you know, the, there was all the politics and all the, you know, drama with the fleet captains, yet the Marines were always tried and true. Like, yeah, we got your back. Like, they still no salute doubt about it. The only one yeah, exactly. He, he felt more at home with them because um, they still understood how to do the crisp salute. And uh, I think there was a line there even earlier on where he was wondering if like the Marines were teaching some of the sailors how to do it just because they didn't know. And um yeah, the the land combat was probably one of my favorite parts of this book. It's been a minute since I've read it, so I'm I'm trying to think of specific details there. But uh, yeah, feel feel free to chime in, guys. I know for me, one of my favorite parts was the land battles because it had so many facets, right? So they're they come in and they defeat the the fleet that is in system. And then they're like, all right, we're going to go get our prisoners of war and civil war happens. So they're sitting there going, Oh, well, this giant civil war just happened. They're trying to get down to their people. The prison guards are like, if we let these people go, the syndic syndics will kill us. And then these other people are like, no, now you're, you're working with the, the Alliance fleet. So like they're between a rock and a hard place. And so they're fighting as hard as they can to keep us from getting our people or from the Alliance from getting their people. Um, and I think the just the whole the whole setup was good. Like you you watched kind of over the shoulder a bunch of people fighting, and um, I really enjoyed just the back and forth in that. I liked it a lot. They lost, didn't they? I don't know if they lost communications or because the government fell down. All what all the drama was going on. They the, the a lot of the ground troops on the syndic side kept sending 
attack forces in and they would just bombard them, just like killing, 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 ki like the, the um, alliance. I was just constantly killing the syndics, but they kept sending mm -hmm. people to attack. And then there was the whole thing with the syndics. Um, didn't they, did they want to get off planet? Or they wanted to be safe because all their family were there as well, weren't they? So they wanted to make a deal yeah. they wanted to protect their family because they were scared that they was going to watch the family die or the rebels, whoever. And then that the rebels didn't know you didn't. There's so many different rebel factions at first, so there's all. It was good because it's building on from the the other book. Now that 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 site is nicely carried on, where um you know they're showing the progression of the syndics are collapsing in certain areas due to the fact of partly what Geary's done with the fleet killing the spreading of all the rumours and all that stuff. And obviously the whole alien thing as well, which is not, they don't know about it, but that's making a strain on the syndics too. Something else that once they picked up the, their prisoners of war, they said at first I thought, um, Ryan found her husband at first, the first, the way it was going on, like they, she ran up, give him a hug and the guy. And I was like, that's a husband. He's back. I, I didn't expect that, but it actually ended up being a friend. That was quite nice. Cause they sort of dove in a bit more with her to sort of, flesh her out a little bit more and stuff yeah i think they set that up to do that yeah well they did talk about finding like the husband and they found a friend instead which was nice it, it gives her somebody she knows which is which is always nice um, yeah well she's had no one actually apart from geary mm -hmm. the outsider looking in which uh yeah we we come to appreciate that because as a, a character, she gave us that um, non-military perspective, which was helpful as a reader. But yeah, she was the outsider. I, I really enjoy how, you know, I think we talked about it in previous streams where like in war, there's always this kind of like demonization of the other sides and everything. And where Blackjack was like the savior of the Alliance and the a boogeyman who lives under the bed for the syndicates, how because of his actions, because he holds true to his virtues, he's kind of indirectly taken all that, that energy or whatever out of it, out of the propaganda, because people know like the, the news is getting around, right? We've seen it time and time again. I think it was the last book where, uh, they decided to pick up what was it like a hundred something survivors on a planet. And then it was like the next, yeah, next, it was quite uh, a bit. yeah, yeah. Next one over. It's like, Hey, you know, I believe in paying my debts more or less. Thank you for saving my nephew. That was it. Yeah. Mm hmm. And so, you know, like I, I'm a big sci-fi fan. I enjoy it for all that good stuff and the tech and everything. But for me, like those moments are, are one of the many reasons why I enjoy this series so much is because of, um, yeah, like just Gary as a leader, his values he follows, like even in times of stress and war, like uh, I think, you know, he talks about how his ancestors, like, well, like when judgment day comes, um, how do we want to be remembered? Right. Like don't, don't stoop to their levels and here they've been behind enemy lines for so long and we're seeing the payout, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think um, it shows a lot too when we, we come into this next, sec next section talking about um, the traitor, um, just how the his thought process is different um, than the rest of the fleet because he's been gone for a hundred years he's been in cryo sleep so his he would never think about doing whatever it takes to take over a fleet like uh kill us do it so his his thought process that says i don't think about this i couldn't do this makes it hard for him to rationalize what's going on with the traitor um and so as we jump in that i I wanted to be surprised at who the traitor was, um, but he had he had wrote written the dialogue in a way that you knew she was she was the traitor. Like, so I was hoping to be surprised, and I was not. Um, it was a little frustrating. Well, she only come really verbal. Like she, she had a little bit in the last 
book, but this book was really where she was more verbal, and it's like, ah, oh, right, okay. It's just, I feel like there was no forward planning with her being the person. It's just like every book, he's needed a new bad person. He's replaced one, added a new, replaced one, changed the baddies around, but he just adds them. Instead of like other things, he sort of forward planned, but this, it sort of wasn't. And it's like, oh, this is the baddie. Yeah, and it's like, okay, um, why? You know, she's calling Geary a syndic lover and he's weak and all that stuff, yet she's killing Alliance people and trying to kill Alliance ships because she loves the Alliance. Uh, you know what I mean? It kind of is a bit like, right, I don't know. She just, I don't know, just weak. There's no build up to her. If she was there from like at least the second book, even if she was like in the shadows of the other people, who mm-hmm. were the, the nooms and them lot, and you thought, oh, okay, she's a bound. She's sort of being tactical, sneaky, and sniggery here and there, and always back in the badge. You can be like, all right, okay, she's pulling the strings, but this way she's not. She got into her positions by sucking up or being aggressive or something like that, and I can't remember. Yeah. You know, it's a big, it's, yeah. big part of the culture, but I think we talked about that. I can't remember if it was on air or not about how um, it, it's one of the challenges with this series where um, it's kind of written as if you can pick up any book and just read it independently. So you kind of feel like they have the story arc that's just exclusively for um, that book. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm right there with you, Joe. It It's not really across the whole series, right? Like we have the big overarching plot, hey, behind enemy lines, need to get back. And then we have our evil villain, each book that comes and goes where, um, try and think, I think the first book was like just to survive. And then we had like Falco. Well, Nooms and, Nooms and K- that's K woman or C woman. And there was yeah. like Frasier or yeah. something or far, whatever. They were the first one. They were in it the second one because they then followed Falco. Mm-hmm. Then they all got shut down. And then the little Yin or Ying, Yin and someone else were like shoehorned in, shoehorned in. It does feel like, you know, but was it, I know obviously last book, the worms happened, but did the worms happen the book before? Was it three books, including this one or just two books? I, th- I, I think know. it was just the two, and that's just kind the of two. the pattern. I might be misremembering where I guess we get a little bit of like the upcoming big yeah. um, obstacle in the next book, but not a whole lot there. Kind of like Joe was saying, like maybe he's figuring these pieces out as he goes where he has the overarching plot put together. Um, but yeah, back, back on point with the question, was the traitor really a big surprise? Not so much. Um, I enjoy these books, but I'm trying to think through if like there's any real major plot twist that we've had up until this point or not. Um, well, the, the worm thing was an interesting like, that was a, when that first started happening. Mm-hmm. That was it's not a twist, but that's kind of like a oh, you know, that's added something different when the ships all didn't work. You know, when the things first blew up, you thought all oh, someone done it, and then then there's the worm. That was an interest. That was not a twist. Well, I suppose it was twisting the story a bit. I don't know, whatever. But that was interesting. But I mm-hmm. do feel it just sort of fell flat. You know, so I've resolved it. If this person who nobody knew, who's the third baddie down the line now. <laughs> you know, it kind of would have been better if one of the other lot didn't actually die in the first shuttlecraft and it ended up being one of the original baddies who, I don't know, still good story, not trying to be a negative. Uh, <laughs> it's just a, yeah. No story is perfect, right? Oh, no. um, didn't, but yeah. I don't know. Oh, there's anything else you want to talk about this? I just remembered something else, something different. No, didn't someone die? Did it, was it the, did the scientist ship captain? Was it last one or this one? She died. The cat that the the. the, the... Let's begin with an F. No, no, no. See, the see the one who did all the worm that she did the the. Oh game. no! But she does fearless. Gius. it's Gius. Um, her name Commander oh, well, Gius. When they come into the 
uh, Padrona system, uh, the they killer collide. tried to. Um, no, no, no. Uh, Cressida might have died. We're not sure. Yeah. Her ship blew up. That was that last the, book. It was no. This this book. It was this um, book. I just remember. I can't remember when she died. The, um, when they came into the home system, her ship was destroyed, and we at the end of the book we didn't know if she was alive or not. Um, but the um, the Captain Gius, the one that told him about the initial worm that would have had them lost in hyperspace, when she got to um, that system, her ship blew up. But she, she sent a message right yeah. before she blew up, saying she knew who um, was who the traitor was. Um, but I personally think that he had no idea who he was going to make the traitor and then decided on somebody and kind of wrote that traitor in. Yeah. It did not feel planned at all. I yeah. feel that's kind of like a, a Hollywood film thing where it's like, oh, we have an idea. They start the start it off, it kind of like catches, and they're like, oh, crap, we need to kind of like work the rest of it out now. You know, there's no sort of like planning to like, is this a good idea from beginning to end? Yeah. yeah. I think I've asked this before, but this is your guys' first Jack Campbell series, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've heard it does get better. Not this is bad, but... Well, he he's a great author. Like, everybody has their own challenges, but um, I read the series after this. I read, I want to say, like, three out of the five of the Syndicate spinoff or whatever. Lost Stars. Um, yeah, and then I've also read... Um, I think the series is something like something dragon or whatnot it's a young adult series of his where he has um like mechanics and mages and and everything and like by the time i got to those series there's a lot more polish you can just see the growth from the author compared to this series which is like at that point 10 12 books prior um, so there's always going to be a bit of a learning curve, right? In figuring out all these, these layers and details. Um, but all I'm in all, I, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like for me, at least so far, book five is definitely on the top half of, um, this first series for me. Um, and again, it could just be because I finally got my ground combat, right? Um, get to see the Marines in action. Two's still probably my favorite, but two, yeah. four, and five are pretty good. See, yeah. I go two, one, and then four and five are tied. They're both equally because they're tying in with each other. You know, mm. I mean, one flows into the other one, and they sort of do their thing. So you learn. So yeah, well, I don't know where way. So then these two are tied, and then I'll see the last ones that crappy one that nothing ever happened. Uh, number three. <laughs> Yeah, no, number three was a little boring. Yeah. yeah, it had one big fight. Is all it really had. Uh, I think it was uh, courageous. That's it. But it ended on a good cliffhanger, didn't it? Because then the next one was where they went back into the battle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So let's go to the last question I had for everybody, and then we can just do general thoughts, feelings. Now that the fleet is home, um, I don't. Under, I don't know how we're going to do a whole book being home. Like, what is going to happen? Like, is it not going to be crazy boring? Is this going to be all politics? Like, kind of like, I, I know the next series, he gets back out there. So what what do we do between Syndic times? I think this, either the syndics are going to turn up or there's going to be some crazy reason why they've got to go back to save someone, do something. Somebody's going to either drag them away or make them have to stay or someone's going to come find them and then they have to sort of retreat and do some dancing around, you know, it's up, obviously it's a, it's a military space opera book, you know what I mean? It's got to be fighting. So they're going to be, something's got to come or they've got to go chase after something. Maybe the aliens turn up, who knows? I don't know. Um, but I don't know. Well, they still got, they still got to finish up that deal. Cause in the, the book before this one, where they made that, not that they kind of made that little under the table deal with that syndic guy. Sort of like you know, seed in that. So that kind mm, of needs yeah. to be tied up. Yeah. You know, um. Yeah. I I don't know. I've got a crazy tin head theory of something else. I want to go after. So as I said <laughs> earlier, full disclosure, I've I'm gotten through the whole next series, 
remind me where exactly book five ends. That way I don't slip up. They ran out of fuel, didn't they? And they 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 uh-huh. done what they had to do as the ships were dropping, run out of fuel, those ships just like floating like ah <laughs> They the the Syndix reserve flotilla was sending a bunch of automated ships to go yes. blow up the hypernet gate. Mm. Um and then because of Jane Geary, uh Geary's niece, our grandniece, uh a hundred years, yeah, that'd be grandniece. Um, she went over and like distracted them enough that they had to actually commit to going and doing it. And they were going to have to do a suicide run. Um, and then by her doing that, it gave them enough time to go over there and destroy enough of their ships where they couldn't blow up the hypernet gate in time. And so they decided to flee and get out of there. They let them go and everybody was running out of gas and basically was like, all right, good thing they ran because we yeah. there's no way we could have beat they that. They just ran and they were like run out of um, fuel, didn't they? That was yeah. Yeah. You, you can imagine just, the students are kicking themselves now, like ah just cruising on back. <laughs> yeah. So we're we're officially in alliance space then, right? Yep. We we are okay. in um Joe's got a map somewhere, but we are officially I think I've got it too. I can probably share the screen to show you guys. But yeah, we are officially back in alliance space right now. Yeah. This is the old one. So Oh, there you go. Joe's got it. Yeah. So, so they're down. Wrong finger. That one. Yeah. If you follow it all the way on my screen to the right, that line is Alliance Space, and we've just crossed over into it. Okay. Okay. So we made it. We're home. And now we get to deal with all the other fears and foreshadowing from um, Madam President, right? Like her and her greatest fear has come to reality where – um, he wasn't the man of legend and he kept reminding everybody, no, I'm just, um, a guy that got stuck in, you know, sleep capsule for the last hundred years. And you guys made all these legends about me, but now he truly is, um, blackjack in, in, in every sense of the word, right? Like leading the fleet home. We thought they were lost forever. Um, syndicate propaganda getting pumped out, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. All right, so we got it set up here. Yep, that is the map. We are in Verandal at this point. Can you zoom in a bit? Uh, I probably up the top. That's it. Bada boom. Yeah, there we go. My, butt, my squinty eyes can't see nothing. <laughs> but yeah, so we started the the battle. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but yeah. we started the battle here in Dalawa, jumped to Harado, jumped to Attila, Padronus and Attila, and then into there. So we did one, two, three, four jumps um, in this book. So we, we moved a bunch. It's a busy what's, book. That, what's that planet above? Uh, Calixa. Oh, that's where... That part above that part, pass now? What's that? I don't know what that why we're talking about that one. That is Star with a Hypernet Gate. So maybe that's to that do may with have the something next, to do the yeah. next book. Yeah. Because the thing is if you look, there's no other Alliance planets. Now that's something I did notice from when I looked at the other map on the other book, the maps are the same. Mm-hmm. So it's not really much of a sport, you know what I mean? But they obviously don't I've, go further that way. So I've seen some other maps that are like I, I did, spoilers. I, I, you don't I need saw to that with you. Was was looking. I saw. <laughs> yeah. I was having a look at trying to look at something. A map up or something. I saw like alien names. I was like, ah, get off, get off, get off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You you, def- you gotta. You can't do that. All right. Let's go back to just people. Oh. All right. So. Oh, my name. All right. So Joe had the next question. Let's put that up there. Any other questions? Oh, Joe, take it away. Got, to go. Tim what you got, Joe? Me. Well, me and another guy, what's his name? C dub C something W. Some guy on my Discord. He um uh C C Dragon? No, oh, I can't remember his name. I feel terrible now. I'm gonna give him a shout <laughs> out now. I'm gonna click on Discord and find him. Where is he? Of my Discord. Oh, C M Draven. Draven. Yeah. Draven. Draven. Um Yeah, I've talked with him a few times in the Discord. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Uh what was gonna say? Yeah, because he was saying like he he's not convinced because well, there's, there's still the, the 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 thing that was in the hypernet key wasn't there the 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 bug thing that in there and he, he was kind of saying like you know maybe that had something to actually do with like the worms and 
that woman was just like a like a puppet or whatever. Because they did talk about what they talk about, like maybe the aliens were on their ships or something. Yeah, speculation yeah. about the aliens and everything. Yeah. I I definitely was going down that rabbit hole and wondering myself like how involved the aliens are because like if they have this crazy technology where they can just quote unquote gift us the hypernet gates like what else are they capable of right um, yeah no, I'm curious I, I I do think that the aliens are fine another aliens and these aliens are sandwiched between the two. And or the, the sandwich between aliens and the syndics, and that's why they're kind of messing with us because they've got these other alien problems to deal with. I don't know. If there's one, it would make sense that there's more than one, right? You say you say that like I'm reading another series before uh, I'm Rust, and it's literally like there was originally just two alien humans and aliens fighting. There's fight, and then another set of aliens turned up by book t- uh, the end of book one, and then book two was these th- you know three aliens or two aliens and humans. And then another aliens turned up. They're dead. And then a baddie <laughs> aliens turned up who killed the original aliens. And then the book I just read, another load of aliens turned up who are dead. So there's four alive aliens, two extinct aliens because there's one alien race. It's like, this is aliens. Even in the books, they're like, hey, you know, you've seen one alien, seen them all now, like, you know, 50 years ago. But like, yeah, aliens now. It's like, Christ, there's loads of them everywhere. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of, yeah. Yeah. That's a good book as well, Fire and Rush, if you like it. You want ground fighting and space fighting? Read that. Oh, no, okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. My um, one of the things I've been thinking about was um, he's he in this book he genuinely convinced um, that he was not going to be the dictator. So now Blackjack is going to be in all these political struggles and battles and all that kind of stuff. I wonder how he handles it and who he leans on more um, if. Rion it kind of gets leaned on or if um, he's going to use uh, um, this Johnny. So. Well, I don't think she's going to have much sway in the grander scheme of things. Like I know she was. Yeah. Cause Admiral breach beach, but watch blotch that's it he was on dauntless so like he she's obviously high enough to be the flagship captain under obviously him right but she's not gonna have as much she should have sway in the polit in the polit a little bit of politics of the um uh, the military side but she's not a politician in the navy so she you know what i mean unless they change her she ends up being like that you know, there's only so much I feel she can do. I think he's going to have to rely on Ryan a lot more. I don't know. She's uh, she's captain of Blackjack's heart, right? Like, no, I'm, yeah, but you know what I'm saying. Like, as in, uh, like, I'm with you. I'm with you. Politic wise, she's not a politician. She's not like Admiral Blotch it was. And even for the fleet captains, she's more of more military than politician, right? Like we've seen oh, yeah. some of the the captains that are more politician than they actually are like well, they give us shit don't they all the time so like yeah i don't i think definitely have to rely on my own and unless she stabs in the back she gets paranoid oh my god she can take over and she she's made that threat before um but she'll I feel stand like in the way she knows he's a good thing as well like so she might be torn you know, like he, you know, you know, we know he goes back out to fight because of the other books or whatever. He probably mm. just goes, you know what? I'll go back out and fight. You <laughs> lot do the politics stuff. I did want to retire, but you know what? The syndics look like they need fighting. I'm gonna go this way. You lot do all the talking over there. That's what I reckon he's gonna do. Is try and get out, get out of it. Well, yeah, we also have all those other elements coming back into it, right? Because they they were pretty much out there on a quote unquote island all left alone, not really part of the Alliance. And now they're back and part of the Alliance, right? Like who knows what all problems and challenges came about while they were away um, because oh, they were yeah. out there for a while, right? How do, do we get an exact timeline? Barely Google. It's, it's, it's quite <laughs> a few months. Yeah. Um, I was about to say like, I, I felt like it was more than half a year, but not like quite a full year. 
Um, so that, that's just book, from maybe. memory. Yeah, I, I believe I believe it's less than a year. Yeah. So that's a decent amount of time, even over the course of a hundred year war. Um, a lot can happen back at home. We know a lot's happened with the syndics during that time. Um, well, well, you as think Joe too. said, the 12 dozen different alien species that might be about like, sorry, go ahead, you, Ramsey. You got to think too. Um, the politicians all thought the fleet was gone. So what have they been doing preparing for a lost fleet that they were like, our, you know, our hopes are gone. What are we going to do? Like rush building ships could be some bankruptcy could be, um, you know, other things like that. He's growing up like, and to think, you know, there's probably military captains that were like, you know, now I'm the big cheese and, you know, promotions and things like that that were done behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. we're probably looking at a political structure that is not ready for the fleet to come back. You know, because there's been no communication, you know, so. With Blotch gone, they obviously had to get another admiral in to take over everyone. I know there was this, this other admiral of that area, whatever his name was, at the end. But there's going to be a new at the admiral guy. And he's going to be, you know, Geary's going to turn up and everyone's going to be like, you know, this whole fleet's going to be like, we're on Geary's side. And he's like, no, you're all under my side. And he's, they're like, mm, but you, you're going to kill us. Uh, you know, you want to go ahead. First, I know you, your type now. We've changed. <laughs> we like living. Well, I think um, as as fun as this was, um, I think we talked about everything. Um, you know, some of the other books have taken a little bit longer, but it was really three big moments. Um, so I, I haven't really talked to you guys about this yet, but I had this plan next live stream on the 28th on Sunday at 4 p.m. again. Yes, I was going to um, say, we do it sooner because we've kind of forgotten about stuff, haven't we? It's quite yeah, a long time. And uh, also, if we make a plan, we can all try to be uh, proactive about being there. Since we're supposed to do it last week. Some, we? some we people got... forget about live streams. Yeah, uh, I, I uh, putting, putting it on Google Calendar now. You said 4 p.m., uh, March. You know you do. Where, you where are we going? Oh, we're going mine, mine this time. You know what I do? I'll set it tomorrow, and then it's ready to go. <laughs> Um, did you guys want to do it on my channel again or do you guys want to do oh, uh, a different oh, channel it's my channel time this time thank you it's your much. turn okay i can't remember who's it was stealing all right uh, keep well, with the rotation cool. <laughs> hanging out with joe on his channel finally uh, before we sign off do you guys want to talk about anything that uh you guys got going on uh i know carl you have a live, live stream coming up in a couple hours right uh 20 minutes going to be geeking out over book four of ascend online if you guys were ever thinking about getting into lit rpg ascend online is a good one to start with um very close to like our current age of video games very relatable um just add nanobots and a whole lot of fun. So excited to do book four there. And yeah, um, I'll take a quick jab at that and then let the rotation keep going. Um, For me, what I enjoy the most about this series is just Blackjack as a character and a leader. In a lot of regards, he is not perfect, but he sticks to his values and seems to always put his people at the forefront of his thoughts when he's making decisions, um, which I can really appreciate and respect. Makes me think that Jack uh, Campbell had some good military leaders in his career that uh, Mm -hmm. gave him inspiration. So yeah, appreciate it. Let the rotation keep going. (laughs) I... I was just thinking about that as we've gone. No, I liked, I like that, like the, the the whole like as they're going, they're going on and seeing different stuff. How the how everything's shaping as they're moving, and you're seeing the events change and uh, you know st- battles that he's done slowly wearing. I like that showing that there is effects to stuff that you do. Um, the characters, I do like the characters, even though some some stuff's a bit childish and a bit like mm, cringy. Like I like mm. them, and I do get attached to the characters the battles are good 
Um, I like the, but I, yeah, space battles are fine. Um, it's a different take than like the Star Warsy that sort of stuff where they will dog fight and stuff. These are just capital ships because realistically you wouldn't have fighters because they're just ineffective against big ships. You can shoot at such long range, so it's kind of that whole thing's quite nice. Um, yeah, the aliens when we see them, I like that. I, I like the sci like one of the things that really gets me is like the way that he planned out the sci fi, the um the like the time differential in uh like um light speed space time is is just like okay we got into system and they're not going to see us for three hours because that's how fast light travels um that you know it, it just is one of the coolest you know the way that they talk about how fast they're traveling you can't get um you know missiles to fire at, at the right speed yeah. um if you're going too fast you can't accurately hit a target going that fast and um i just really enjoyed that kind of thing like uh communication breakdown over that much time like how we can move that faster um that's what i mean when i was saying about like star wars and stuff you're fighting ships are really close they're beating each other up right point blank range but oh, this yeah. is doing long distance which is how it would be yeah, it you know. feels like if we actually were in space battles, this is how it would truthfully be, not what yes. we see in Star Wars. Yes. Mm -hmm. More more hard sci-fi, less fantasy sci-fi with your loud blaster sounds and your pew pews coming through space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've never been so. a fan of lasers. Yeah, yeah. Well, Hell, hell Lances are lasers. Yeah, uh, I like to go ignore them. <laughs> <laughs> I like the grape shots, that's what I like. Ball bearings. Yeah. That, that's that's yeah, what you would use, like though. Fist-sized ball bearings that you shoot at a ship. Yeah. Or that right. that that other. What's that that atom thing that goes like, <laughs> destroys a oh, ship? The, I'm sorry. Um, it goes what? <laughs> <laughs> that's this. What is that? That's the. Uh, <laughs> wow. What's it called? It's a field. Something field. I can't remember. Dispersal yeah. field. Basically, it like separates atoms from one that's another. That's it. It just, it just so, makes like, gaping it, holes in the ship. Just yeah, the sort of a ship, and that's it. <laughs> that's exactly what I thought. Just imagine every time they're like, "Some of our ship fired into." I just imagine the ship going. And the other one's like, "Ah!" <laughs> yeah, that's, it. that's that's how my mind plays when they're fighting each other at long next, distance. Next book, can we get you to act out the book as we're yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. You know, just sound effects going past. and everything. Bzz, ah, fuck! And the other one goes off. Get, get your partner to narrate and we'll get yeah, you on the sound yeah, effects so and then um by request in the chat we'll just have ramsey up on the screen in all of his glory and uh we uh yeah yeah we got we got a show so that's it all right well let's call that the end uh, we'll run that in at right at 43 minutes thanks guys oh wait it. is that like the particle cannon particle protection can i don't know carlos um here i'll show that real quick particle protection projection cannon from BattleTech. i've never um i don't know what BattleTech is is that a book mech warrior is i believe the same thing as battle tech okay um i might i might be misquoting um but yeah yeah yeah, yeah. all right i'll have to um I'll have to see what that is. Um, Carlos, if you want to put that in the Discord, I'll, I'll check that out if that's a book or whatever. So, all right. Well, let's end the show. Uh, next live stream, possibly, hopefully, uh, March 28th at 4 p.m. So, uh, yes, Mech Warrior is what he said. Cool. All right. See you guys. See you, lads.